Daniel chapter 6, starting at verse number 1. Reading from the New Living. When you have it, say amen. Darius the Mede decided to divide the kingdom into 120 provinces. And he appointed his high officer to rule over. The king also chose Daniel and the other two. I mean, Daniel and two others as administrators to supervise the high officers and protect the king's interests. Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all the other administrators and high officers. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs, but they couldn't find anything. Look at your name and say, I, you can't find nothing. They couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn. He was faithful always, faithful and always responsible and completely trustworthy. So they concluded the only chance, my God, of finding grounds for accusing Daniel would be in connection with the rules of his religion. So the administrators and high officers went to the king and said, Long live King Darius. We are all in agreement. We are administrators, officials, high officers, advisors, and governors. <laughs> all of us Absalom's. That the king should make a law that will be strictly enforced, giving orders that, that, that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to any divine or human except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. And now, your majesty, issue and sign this law so it cannot be changed. An official law of the Medes and the Persians that cannot be revoked. Verse 9 says, so King Darius signed the law. What the administrators in the uh, high officials and high officers did they appeased to the king's pride that's what they did they had an arterial motive and so they went and said my God decree something that's going to make everybody bow down to you that's, they, they appeased appealed to his come on pride Verse 10 says, but when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and kneeled down as usual in a, his upstairs room with his windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he's always done, giving thanks to his God. Then the officials went together to Daniel's house and found him praying and, and, and asking God's help, asking for God's help. Verse 12, so they went straight to the king and reminded him about his law. Did you not sign a law for the next 30 days? Any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty will be thrown into the den of lions? Yes, the king replied. Jump down to verse 13. Then they told the king that that man Daniel, one of the captives from Judah, is ignoring you and your law. He still prays to his God three times a day. Hearing this, the king was deeply troubled. Watch this. And he tried to think of a way to save Daniel, he, 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 he spent the rest of the day looking for a way to get Daniel out of this predicament because Daniel had favor with the king. Mm. In the evening, the man went together to the king and said, Your majesty, you know that you're, according to your law, the Medes and the Persians, no law that the king signs can be changed. So, the la so, so at last the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the den of the lions. The king said to him, may your God, whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. I'm going to say that right there because I wanted to go to 28, but I'm going to leave it right there. Father, thank you. Loose my tongue, Father God. Settle me down with this microphone in my hand, Lord. Help me to adjust and adapt, Father God, without my lapel. And I just thank you for the people of God that you have sent to hear your word tonight. Speak to their spirits. Encourage them. Strengthen them. We are in a war. And your word decrees and declares, Father God, decreed Old Testament, declared New Testament, Lord, that those, Jesus said, that endure to the end, oh my God, the same shall be saved. So, Father God, give us that enduring power. Give us that faith, Father God, that will not last every storm that we may be facing. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Mm. 
again we you can go to youtube and look at last wednesday uh and i won't rehearse my god but the power but the title of the sermon is the power of consistent faith god dropped this on me last week uh because i'm looking at society and i'm talking and dealing with uh, sons as well as different pastors my God and looking at what's going on in the world of course we can all see we all hear some of us are seeing and hearing some of the same things there's so many people as I've stated my God is turning away uh, from Christianity and renouncing their allegiance to God and no longer believing what they first believed and and so therefore I just want to encourage you uh, tonight as I finish part two of the power of consistent faith to remain steadfast in that which you first believed. To remain steadfast in that which you first believed. Now, if your belief was wrong when you first came to the Lord, then you might be believing wrong. But if your belief, my God, was accurate and it was built on the scriptures, my God, then you might want to hold on to that right there. And don't let society tell you what you once believed that you know is truth is no longer truth. <laughs> Ooh, that was heavy right there. Because the world is coming against biblical truth. I just looked in, uh, 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 read, my God, and uh, was talking to Pastor Chris. She may be looking, my God, from Fresno, my God. But they have legalized, my God, and telling the churches to begin to accept same-sex marriages. It's a law. Pastor Jeff said year before last, my God, that get ready and, uh, because they're going to be coming after pastors. And they're going to make it a requirement that pastors uh, acknowledge and marry same-sex marriages, man with man and woman with woman. And they will probably come against uh, your 501c3 status. But let me let you and those that are watching online know that you do not have to have a 501c3 status to do business as a church. All that does is just give you some tax uh, benefits, my God. But, but you don't have to have that to function as a church. And so uh, it's going to require something in this hour. Uh, and I like Daniel because Daniel stood. Oh, Lord, have mercy. My God, he stood against opposition. So y'all just bear with me a little bit before I get to the text, my God, because as I was going back today, my God, I go all the way back and I just started reading from chapter 1, my God, but I'm going to pick it up in chapter 4 because the reason why Daniel, my God, had consistent faith when you trace the things that Daniel had to walk through before we get up to chapter 6, my God, he showed, my God, and not only did he, he modeled uh, consistent faith. Now, 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 just bear with me, my God. Uh, let me do a little reading. Uh, that's why I needed my, mm, my God. But just bear with me. Let me show you how I got to this title called Consistent Faith. If you look at Daniel chapter 4, it says, uh, let me one minute. Let me make sure. Chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar, starting in verse 2. Four, Daniel 4 2 it says peace and prosperity to you I want you all to know about this miraculous sign and wonders the most high God has performed for me how great are his signs and how powerful his wonders his kingdom will last forever his rule his rule to all generations verse 10 says while I was laying in my bed this is what I dreamed. This is the king, King Nebuchadnezzar. He, I saw a large tree in the middle of the earth. The tree grew tall and strong, reaching high into the heavens for all the world to see. It had fresh green leaves, and it was loaded with fruit for all to eat. Wild animals lived in its shade, and birds nest in its branches. All the world was fed from this tree. Okay? Now, if you jump down to... Chapter 4, verse 25, the king had a dream and he could not find anyone in his kingdom to interpret his dream. Sound like Joseph. Come on, somebody. He couldn't find anybody to interpret the, his dream. So he was real frustrated. And they sent for Daniel. And Daniel said in verse 24, this is what the dream means. I'm jumping through. Just follow me. Your majesty and what the most high has declared will happen to my Lord. This is to the king. You will be driven. King Nebuchadnezzar got very proudful. And so the dream that he had was about him. It wasn't about nobody else. And some of the dreams you're having, it ain't about nobody else. So don't try to put it on nobody else. How about looking at self? I'm going somewhere. I promise. He said, you will be driven. This is what Daniel interpreted. You will be driven from human society. 
talking to the king, you will live in the fields with the wild animals, you will eat grass like a cow, and you will be drenched with dew, with the dew of heaven. Seven periods, that means seven years of time will pass while you live this way, until you learn, watch this now, until you learn, please, my God, put you, yourself, and myself in the scripture until we learn this way until we learn that the most high rules over the kingdoms of the world and gives them to anyone he chooses. But the stump and roots of the tree were left in the ground. This means that you will receive your kingdom back again when you have learned that heaven's rule. Verse 27 says, King Nebuchadnezzar, please accept my advice. This is Daniel talk. Stop sinning and do what is right. Break, break from your wicked past. And be merciful to the poor. Perhaps then you will continue to prosper. Twelve months later. Jump down to verse 29. Twelve months later. He was taking a walk. Talking about King Nebuchadnezzar. He was taking a walk on the flat roof of his royal palace in Babylon. As he looked out across the city. Look what he said. After this warning. After this interpretation from Daniel. Look what the king said. Twelve months later. Look at this great city of Babylon. By my own might, power, mighty power, I built this beautiful city as my royal residence to, to display my, majest my majestic splendor. While these words were still in his mouth, a voice called down from heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, this message is for you. You are no longer ruler of this kingdom. You will be driven from human society. You will live in the fields with the wild animals. You will eat grass like a cow. Seven periods of time, my God, I mean seven years will pass while you live this way until you learn that the most high rules over the kingdoms of the world and, and, and gives them to anyone he chooses. That same hour, the judgment my God was fulfilled and Nebuchadnezzar was driven from his human society he ate grass like a cow and so forth and so my God Daniel came to the man of God and interpreted his dream after my God this dream was fulfilled verse 34 says after this time has passed I this is now the king talking I Nebuchadnezzar looked up to heaven uh oh so he went from horizontal to vertical but he had to be knocked down. Come on, somebody. Uh, can you imagine being driven from your kingdom? And you, the Bible says that he, he, his fingernails became like claws. <laughs> and he began to eat the grass like an animal. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. He lost his mind. Oh, my God. Don't you know? Mm, get the, mm. God can make you lose your mind, but he can give it back to you. Oh, one of the rappers said, I lost my mind, but Christ gave me his. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. But so God know how to come out to that pride. That we all got. But Nebuchadnezzar said, he, he, he said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, looked up to heaven, uh, my, my sanity returned, and I praised and worshiped the most high God and honored the one who lives forever. That's King Nebuchadnezzar. And then you jump over to chapter 5. Now you got another king. Nebuchadnezzar is off the scene. Now, Belshazzar. It's now king. Verse 5, starting in verse number 3. So they brought these gold cups taken from the temple of the house of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines drank from them. While they drank from them, they praised their idols made of gold, silver, bronze, wood, iron, and stone. Let me say that right there. Uh, an idol is anything that we give our allegiance to other than Christ. I want to make it as, uh, as simplistic as I can. Anything that you adore, anything that you love, anything that we put before God is considered an idol. Your marriage can be an idol. Your kids can be an idol. Your car can be an idol. Your club can be an idol. Your TV shows can be an idol. Your long hair, your long nails, nice suits, whatever it is. I'm trying to make it where you understand. Because a lot of us say, okay, we ain't got nothing. The devil is alive. Every last one of us got stuff in our life, my God, that interferes with our time with God. Facebook, my God, social media, Instagram, with all that stuff here. All that stuff ain't nothing but an idol. Anything that you put before God would interfere with your allegiance to him is considered an idol. So we might need to ask God to reveal. And some of us may already know. Some of us, that's me too, we may already know. And some of us may not know. But that what we don't know, we need to say, God, search me and show me the idols that's in my life. Yeah, God ain't through working. Show me the idols that's in my life. Because anything that you take allegiance to and you love and adore and worship more than God. Don't you know you can worship things more than you do to God? That's why the Bible says don't worship the thing. Worship the creator of the thing. 
See, some, somewhere along the line, my God, we be, our loyalty and our allegiance begin to shift. Uh, we start out in God, but then we start out worshiping things that he blessed us to, with, to enjoy. Uh, we got to get back up under God. We got to get back in covenant and start worshiping the creator of the thing more than the creator, more than the thing. Let me slow down. So are y'all with me so far? And so here we go. Down, here we go. Uh, the the, the Belshazzar is, is full of itself. Verse 7 says in verse 5, chapter 5, 7, the king shouted for the enchanters, astrologers, and fortune tellers to be bought before him. He said to, to these wise men of Babylon, whoever can read this writing and tell me what it means will be dressed in purple, in a purple robe, royal honor, and will have gold chains placed around his neck. He will become the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Verse, and so verse 10 says, but when the queen mother heard what was happening, because the king made a decree and could nobody interpret the dream. So when the queen mother heard, verse 10, what was happening, she hurried to the banquet hall. She, she said to Belshazzar, long live the king. Don't be so pale and frightened. Verse 11, uh, there is a man. Somebody look at your name and say, there is a man. In your kingdom. See, God got people strategically placed around you. <laughs> oh, my God, don't overlook people. Uh, don't let the enemy deceive you, my God, because she or he don't look uh, uh, float your boat or whatever, my God. There's people strategically, that's a major, major, major revelation placed in your life, my God, who that's waiting for you to get in position, my God, so God can use them to bless your life. Come on, somebody. And so here was the king flipping out. Flipping out, my God, and the queen came and settled him, kind of like my wife. My God, selling me, like, hold up, baby, we got this, God got this, God got this. Uh, there is a man in your kingdom who has within him the spirit of the holy God. Now, keep in mind, these people didn't worship the true and living God. They didn't worship Jehovah Jireh. They didn't worship Yahshua. Come on, somebody. And so, my God, Daniel has an opportunity, my God, to reveal, my God, the true and living God to people who worship idols. They actually was deceived. One of the greatest deception is self-deception. And people in the body all around the world, including her tonight, my God, I love you. But we, I mean, be careful. We got to be careful that we are, we are not operating and living our life in self-deception. Meaning that we think we somewhere when we ain't there. We think we at a place and we ain't there. Oh, we think we up here, but we really down here. Come on. We think we mature, but we really act like children. Come on, baby. Uh, we think we solid in God, but we really in love with the world. It's called self-deception. That's more. Oh, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. I've been there. Uh, I just tell myself when I was sick on them drugs, my God, I got this. I don't need to go to treatment. Self-deception. Couldn't stay clean and sober 24 hours. Self-deception. So let me bring it up to you. I just told on me, now tell on yourself. I said a sinner's prayer so I, I can live the way I want to live. I'm going to heaven anyway. I ain't got to read my Bible. I, I, here's another. Who, here's a good one right here. My, uh, I ain't got to go to church to be a Christian. Well, Hebrews 10.25 says different. I ain't got to love them. I just want to fool with them. That showed me that in the Bible. The second greatest law, commandment, is to love thy neighbor. Here's another one right here. When we focus everything external, we put all of our emphasis, men and women, mostly women, I'm sorry, and men, we focus everything, how good we look external. But we don't care how tore up we are on the inside. Low self-esteem, no confidence. We got all of our doors open up. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Our doors is open and me, mm, and we're coming in and out. Come on, somebody. And we so uh, present all this stuff on. We so pretty on Facebook. But inside, my God, we tore up. But we think we good. I'm still in the. Sp Let me go back. Let's go up. There's a man. That's in his kingdom who are the spirit of God, the gods. During Nebuchadnezzar's reign, this man was found to have insight, understanding, and wisdom like no other gods. Little G, your predecessor, uh, your predecessor, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, made him chief over all the musicians, enchanters, astrologers, fortune tellers, and Babylon. I mean, in Babylon, this man, Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar, has exceptional ability and is filled, church, listen, with divine knowledge and understanding. He can interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel. 
and he will tell you what the writing means. See, 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 uh, when your gift is in demand, all you got to do is be who you are. You ain't got to try to compete with nobody. You ain't got to try to get nobody's spot, my God. You ain't got to try to be somebody that you ain't, my God. Because God already know what he put in you, my God. And so, my God, when, my God, ooh, my God, when your gift is in demand. That's why it's so important to know who you are. When you know who you are, you walk different. You carry yourself different. You, 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 you begin to place in your circle people who can move forward with you. You won't have people weighing you down. You won't have people, my God, robbing you and telling you what you can't do. You got people that can carry you. You got four people that can lift you to the top of the roof. And then when we're willing to cut open the roof and say, mm, come on. You, when you know who you are, you place people around you that can push you forward. When you don't know who you are and you're deceived and you think you're more than what you really are, you have people around you that's gossiping, lying, bike bike. My God, always talking around about the church. You all, you always have people around you telling you what you can't do. Girl, who ain't nobody gonna love you? Got too many kids. Girl, ain't nobody gonna be with you. you hey, come on, man. I'm talking to the men too. You'll place people around you that allow you to stay dysfunctional. You'll place people around you to make you comfortable in your mess. My God, you don't want to be around nobody that's gonna call you out, that's gonna make you rise, gonna make you become the king that God called you to be and the queen that God called you to be. We put people around us that keeps us dysfunctional. Yeah, we put people around us when we don't know who we are to keep us dysfunctional because we think we fall alone because we can quote the scripture and speak in some tongues. Somebody give God a hand. We making good time. Daniel answered the king. Verse 17, Daniel answered the king and told him, keep your gifts. Quit letting people buy you. He told him, if you, if you, if you interpret this dream, I'm going to give you the best of everything. Daniel said in verse 17, he said, keep your gifts and give them to somebody else. See, when you're already blessed, I don't even keep it. Give it to somebody else because you can't buy me. That's why it's dangerous, my God, when you're gifted and unsubmitted. See, I said, because you will prostitute your gift. Yeah, they prostituted their gifts. Don't you know when we, when we love God and try to love the world at the same time, we are prostituting ourselves? Read the book of James in the New Testament. So don't, so, so don't, so, so don't sell yourself short because don't let nobody use you up. Uh, keep your gift closed. Quit letting everybody have your gift. Everybody ain't privileged to your gift. That's for your husband and that's for your wife. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, it's only five people clapping, Jack. I can't get nobody to say nothing right, right there. I said that for your husband and that's for your wife. Keep your gift closed. Verse 20 says, when his heart, my God, but when his heart and mind were puffed up, here we go, another king puffed up, my God, with, with arrogance, he was brought down from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. He was driven from human society. He was given the mind of a wild animal, talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 22 says, you are his successor, O Belshazzar, you and you knew all this. Look how then you're talking to the next king. And you knew all this, yet you have not humbled yourself. See, the Bible says God gave warning before destruction. Let me, let me teach you something. Why do you and I, I and you, because I always want to identify, because I don't want nobody to think I'm throwing stones at nobody. But God placed people, when you see somebody else stumbling and falling, and you see somebody, I ain't, talking about, I ain't just talking about Christian. When you see somebody else, my God, that has done something and it didn't turn out right, why would you go do it? The Bible says God get warning before destruction. God allow you and I to see something so you and I don't have to make that mistake. I can't get nobody to say that right there. My God, God got life lessons every day. God has given us life lessons, but we falling for the okie doke. You know, we self-deception, thank you. We tell ourselves, well, they didn't know what they were doing. I know what I'm doing, so I'm going for it. Pride. If God had already showed you his character... And you got legal, you got evidence, my God. Uh, well, he ain't going to treat me like he treated the last five. And now you got him and now you don't know what to do. Now you're about to lose your mind. You don't pray. You don't study. You don't come to church. My God, you're worshiping him. You're trying to figure out what he doing or she doing. I'm just giving you the scripture. 
Well, actually, May, I was watching T.D. Jakes, and he was reading, and uh, me and my wife, uh, and he was just uh, reading the scriptures and teaching the scriptures. That's all I'm doing after that. Just reading the teaching. Just reading the teaching. And it's all, that's why, thank you, to go. That's why people talking about the Bible is outdated. Everything I'm giving you is applicable for right now. I'm not preaching the Old Testament. I'm preaching New Testament. Even though I'm reading out the Old Testament, I'm making it revelatory for you and I right now today. Don't tell me the Bible is outdated. Don't tell me the Bible, my God. Oh, my God, don't work now. Don't tell me that. You can't tell me that. Can't tell me that. Can't, can't tell me that. Let me get y'all out of here. Mm-hmm. Uh, learn the lessons. Don't learn the hard way. God put stuff and things in front of you so that you and I don't have to make that mistake. God loves you and I enough. When you see stuff, pay attention to what you see. Don't be a fool as the scripture would decree. Don't be void of ignorance. Another word for ignorance, my God. In Greek, my God, New Testament means void of understanding. Don't be void of understanding. Don't try to justify, my God. You see it for what it is. It is what it is. Quit deceiving yourself and thinking it ain't what it is. That's what it is. The Bible says you can tell a tree by the fruit that it burned. My God, how much more evidence do you need, church? And then when we get bit by that python and now we come to church and we don't want to praise, we don't want to fellowship, we don't want to read, we don't want to deal with our children because we mad at them or that when you should be mad at yourself. Okay. I'm trying to show you how I got to where the title of the sermon is. And so Daniel said, my God, you have seen the king before you and what happened to him. And, and now here you go. And so here, uh, look what the word say. Put the word on it. Verse, uh, I need some better glasses. Me and my wife are going to get some too. <laughs> Verse 20, it said, for you have proudly defied. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You have proudly defied the Lord of heaven and have had these cups from his temple brought before you, you and your Nobles and your wives and your concubines have been drinking wine from them while praising little G's of silver, gold, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Them is all considered idols. Mm. That neither see nor hear nor know anything at all. But you have not honored, watch this, you have not honored the God who gives you the breath of life and controls your destiny. That goes back to what we've been talking about, about the in-between. God is in control of your destiny. See, 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 this is why I won't never let nobody star make me feel bad because I worship God with so much passion. See, because I understand that God controls my destiny. But here, look what the word of God says, Pastor Ron and Pastor D. My God, my God, we have refused to give God the honor. We'll worship the Dallas Cowboys. We'll clap, screen, and go horse behind the cowboys and come into church and sit still like a lump on a... See, see, that's what you call idol. That's what you call disloyalty. See what I'm trying to say? Never let nobody make you feel bad because you are trying to live up to God. You're trying to honor God. You're trying to live a separated life. You're trying to live a sanctified life. See, dishonor will get you in trouble with God. Uh, that's why you got to thank God for his mercy. See, one thing about the word grace, I love the John Bevere, uh, John Bevere. Grace, my God, is another word, another word he, uh, in New Testament, my God, is empowerment. See, we need God's grace to empower us to do what our flesh in the natural cannot do. You see what I said? Never let nobody make you feel bad because you are trying at this day and time. Who am I got to honor God? Atani, look at me, y'all young ladies. Star, y'all look at me, little star. Never let nobody at school, my God, make you feel bad because you ain't got your legs open. Because you ain't smoking weed. You ain't popping pills, my God. You stand. And you stand for righteousness. You stand for holiness. And you tell a devil you are a lie. Get your hands up off of me. Don't you inbox me. Don't you text me. Never feel bad because you're trying to honor God. Somebody give God a hand. I speak to my daughters. I speak to my little daughters around her. Keep yourself for God. Oh my God. Keep yourself for God, men and women. A lot of people won't stand for God. They just fit in. They give in to peer pressure. They give in because they because you want to be you want to be accepted. You want to fit in, you want everybody to like you. You don't want nobody talking about say, look at her. That go that Christian. Look at him. That go that Christian. Now that stuff don't work. See, you can't. Ugh. You got to be able to stand for God. In an hour where people are turning away. 
People are shrinking. They don't want nobody to know they're Christians. People don't want to be associated. Ain't nobody taking a bold stand for Christ. And when you get somebody that take a bold stand, all of a sudden, uh, look at him. He don't take all that. He powerful. He, uh, I'm just taking a stand for God. Holiness still matter. Lifestyle still matter. Sanctification still matter. The devil is alive. He's king and he's king all by himself. He's Lord and he's Lord all by himself. I can't let your contamination cause me not to honor my God. Because you got to compromise your spirit, the devil is a lie. Stand for God. I'm building the church up. Stand for God. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, stand for God. Stand for God. So that means if we stand for God, that means the stuff that we fall into, we shouldn't be falling to. You can't say stand for God and then fall every time like God know my heart. That's a lie. Stand for God. Say, God, give me grace. Give me the power to say no to the flesh. Give me the strength to resist the devil. Help me turn my back on you. Help me turn my back on her. Oh, my God. I'm tired of falling. And so, 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 who this king is, he didn't want to surrender. Uh, he was prideful. Now, watch this. Uh, and so, Daniel interpreted the dream for Belshazzar. Jump down to verse 30. It says, that very night, Belshazzar, the Babylonian king, was killed. During the, and, and, and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom. So now he come from Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar. Now we up to da uh, Darius, King Darius. So that's three. This is the third king. The first two, Daniel, interpret dreams. They didn't heed. Now we're dealing with Darius, who God actually caused Dar uh, Daniel to have favor with Darius. And so Darius had some conniving people that supported the administration. Pastor, watch the people you got around you. They tell you that, but they really the ones I need to be watching. The administration, the minister, see, see, but see, these are men, as I was studying in the back, these, the, the two administrators, the people that was in the administration, they had to be very trustworthy. Because if somebody would try to kill the king, they had to be willing, my God, to offer their lives for that, to protect the king. And so, my God, they couldn't be a part of the plot. That's why he had Daniel and then two more trusted advisors, the administrators. But these administrators, my God, somewhere along the line, they let the spirit of deception get in them. And so they got envy of Daniel because Daniel had favor with Darius. Come on, somebody. And so Daniel was going up the mountain, next level, elevation. Come on, somebody. There's some people that don't mind you walking on the bottom. But when you start rising to go to the top, they're going to start hating on you, trying to pull you back. The Bible says, my God, that when Daniel, it says, it says then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling his government. Long as you calling your friends and it's always poor me, can you loan me something to pay my sale bill? Okay. Girl, I'm short $20. Can you give me $20? Girl, I ran out of gas. Can you come help me? Okay. Girl, you, you want to go out to eat at the church? No, girl, I ain't got no money. Long as you got that type of mindset, they want you to stay right there. But when you decide to take ownership for your life, when you decide to break camp in advance, as the Bible say, when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, as Pastor Helen Trevor, uh, Hel Helen Trobiz told us, my God, when you get tired of them, praying those victim prayers, come on, somebody, when you decide that you're going to come from the bottom and you're coming all the way up to the top, those same people, my God, all of a sudden now, they hating on you. Some people need you to stay in chaos. Some people need you to stay in your mess. It makes them feel comfortable. But when you decide to rise, they got to make a decision. They gonna stay down or they going up with you who, who am I talking to that's why you gotta be okay with clipping people that's why they be, uh, gotta be okay with letting people go cause some people can walk with you with the chickens but when it's time to soar like eagle they can't soar cause they wanna stay on the ground pecking they wanna peck like a chicken but when you decide to soar like an eagle they can't go cause they wanna peck they wanna peck yeah yeah people need you to stay sick People need you to stay sick. People need you to stay dysfunctional. Uh, some people, my God, some, oh my God, some people want you to be dependent on them. Some people want you to always call them, my God, because they get some type of satisfaction off of your dysfunction. You better rise up. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you was created in God's image. The Bible decrees and declares, my God, that you and I are joint heirs, my God, to the throne of God. Take control of your life. Who, who am I talking to in the church? Some people need you to be dysfunctional because it make them feel good it feeds their pride and I promise you every time they give it to you they call in their home girl tell me girl there she go again 
There he go again, always begging, but they go to going home for Christ Church. I'm looking at him online. She's standing up clapping, but then, yeah, she already told me she needs $20 when she get out of church. My. Be careful who you got around you. And see, the reason why I'm making it revelatory, because see, because see, I'm trying to show you Old Testament scripture has applicable for today. Because many people, and even those watching, my God, think the Bible has no revelatory. It's not revelant today. That's Old Testament. They don't apply. The devil is allowed. I'm showing y'all how. That right there, the scripture, my God, applies right now. It's applicable right now. Right now. Right now for your life and my life. And so as Daniel began to get promoted by the king, my God, his friends, my God, that was in the office in the kingdom with him was okay. Until God began to take him up. Shanika, until God began to take him up. They was okay with him down on the ground. They was okay, my God, when they was down on the ground, when they was walking together. How can two people walk together except there be agreement? See, there was agreement on the ground. But when he went up higher, it was no more agreement because they didn't have the capacity to go high. Everybody can't go up with you because they ain't got the capacity. Quit letting people pull you down. You got the capacity to soar, and you keep letting people pull you down and eat with the chickens. Everybody can't go and be okay with it. Everybody wasn't supposed to come to 205 South Shirley that was at 3434. Because some of them want to be chickens even though they try to talk like eagles. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And then they sign me this up. Let me balance it out. Pastors, some people, they came and they sign me this up and it's time for them to go. Jake said, be cool with them going. If they serve, let them go. You got to be careful. I mean, you got to be cool with people coming, serving their purpose in your life. Release them with a blessing and let them go. Everybody not coming in your life to stay. People come for seasons. People come to fulfill a purpose. And after their purpose is up, they gone. That's why I don't be flipping all out. I was praying today on my consecration. God, whoever supposed to be here, they'll be here. Whoever ain't, I don't want them in no way. Nobody want to be pastor no mess. Yeah. Let me get there, Pastor. And so here we go. Here we go. So, 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 so now Daniel, uh, my God is... Decided that he's not going to go against what these administrators tried to do. He's had the fishers. They, tried, they got the king. They appealed to his pride, my God, that everybody that's in his kingdom need to bow down and worship you. So he signed a decree. And y'all told y'all last week that a king came, reverse his decree. Once a king make a decree, it's final. And to go against a king is automatic death. Are y'all with me so far? So jump up to point number two. Put that on the screen for me as we talk about consistent faith. Point number two. Last week I told y'all, you can go online and look, uh, uh, consistent faith will be tested. As I told y'all, Daniel was tested, but he stood. So now we are also consistent faith will testify. Sometimes our testimony of our faith under trial speaks louder than the testimony of our words. Oh, my God. Y'all know the, the saying. We, people would rather see a life than hear about your life. But we say that, but then uh, we quote the cliches, we speak the language. Uh, people, we say, what we say, people rather see a life than hear about a life, however we say it. But then when they look at our life, we tell people, you're the only Bible somebody going to believe. But when somebody squeeze you, Bible don't come out. When somebody bump up to you, don't, that don't come out. When one of the leaders or the pastors tell you, no, what's coming out? Yeah. When you don't like something that my God that was decreed inside 205 South Sheridan, what's coming out? But you just said, you're the only Bible somebody going to read. Are y'all with me so far? I'm trying to help the church. We don't like this type of teaching, but it's what it is. Your lifestyle matters. And so, therefore, we wonder why people, my God, that used to um, uh, latch on to us, all of a sudden they didn't backed up because they didn't see something. What we talk about don't match what we walk about. Come on, somebody. So now they didn't backed up on you, and now you're talking about, oh, I don't need it no way. Pride. Don't turn on the people that God brought in your life to help you, but when they got there, you wasn't ready to handle them. And so now they didn't see something, they didn't backed up. Now you mad at them. You was the one that couldn't handle when they came. Self-deception. Quit thinking you farther alone than what you really are. I'm going to tell y'all something right now. I don't want nothing but what God has given me the grace to handle. I said, I, Pastor, Mr. G, I don't want nothing but what God has given me the capacity, pastor, and the grace to handle. Anything over that will kill me. 
See, you want more than what you can handle. If you want more, then you got to be willing to pay the price to get more. That means sacrificing. That means asking God to enlarge your capacity. That means telling God to clean up the secret lives, the double lives that we live. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of us men that's living with these women, but the boy got transitional homes. He got a few beds for you. Go stay over there. The devil is see, see, how bad do you want it? Let me put some, let me put something on it. My baby back there watching. When I came home from prison in 1998, I wasn't married to Tiki. So where did I go? I wouldn't stay with my mama. Because I didn't want to be fornicating. So I wouldn't stay with my mama. When me and my wife got married, then I went home. I had to protect myself. How bad do you want to say? I'm serious about mine. That's why I can preach the way I preach because my life matches what I preach, baby. I said that after that. I wouldn't stay with mama. I didn't go home and stay with Tiki. I wouldn't stay with my mama because I know we would have jumped off if I went home after doing four years in the penitentiary. So instead, I wanted to keep my relationship with God. I love God more than I love sex, my God. And so I wouldn't stay with my mama. Me and my wife flew to Las Vegas. I got married. And then the rest of it is history. I can't get nobody to say, how bad do you want it? What are you willing to do to her job well done, my good and faithful servant? I earned the right to speak in your life. Yeah, that's what I did. What would you do? Quit justifying and deceiving yourself and thinking it's okay for you to live with a woman that ain't your wife. The devil is a lie. We preach truth at going off of Christ's church. You might not like the way I deliver it, but it's Bible. Let your life testify. Let your life testify. Let your life testify. Daniel's life testify. Let's go a little deeper. My God, like I said, sometimes the testimony of our faith under trial speaks louder than our testimony in our words. Do less talking and more walking. Write this down up on, on the point number uh, two. Uh, it testifies to our enemies. When, when you have a lifestyle, people can lie on you and talk about you. But one thing they cannot deny is evidence. Okay, so you don't believe me. Verse 10 says, but when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and kneeled down as usual. See, this was a way of life for him, Pastor Ron, as usual. In his upstairs room with his windows open toward Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he has always done, giving thanks to his God. Then the officials went together to Daniel's house and found him praying and asking for God's help. So they went straight to the king, gossipers, haters. They already knew that they was going to find Daniel. Stay with me now. Stay with me. They already knew, oh my God, they already knew. That's why they said there's no other area we're going to be able to find fault with this man. But when it comes to a relationship with God. And so they knew the hour. They knew he went three times a day. My God, they knew when. See, the enemy is cunning, crafty. Cunning. Quit thinking you're going to deceive the enemy. The enemy know when we, see, that's why you got to switch up. That's why you got to shift sometimes. See what I'm trying to say? Instead of, instead, of, instead of sitting in their favorite seat, sit in the tub and read sometimes. Adjust and adapt. Do something different, my God. Because uh, you know, you know, God, God going to meet me. This is my favorite place right here. God going to meet me right God going to do. The devil going to do everything he can to keep you from getting right here. I said the devil going to do everything he can to, get, to keep you. Because, see, God has done some things right here for you. God has, my God, uh, um, did some healing and did, did some transformation. You got a memorial right here. You got a lot of memories right here. So the devil going to do everything he can to keep you and I from getting right here. So you got to be okay that if you don't make it there, I'll make it right here and I'm okay. I'm still going to serve the same God if I was serving him over there. And so the devil knew, the devil, I said knew, he used these administrators. He knew that this man was going to be up here praying. They already knew that because he was faithful. He honored God. His lifestyle mattered. He was serious about God. Come on, somebody. And so they already knew, Pastor Fred said, that they was going to find this man. In, where is God going to find you at? What God going to find you at? Right now, as you sit up under the sound of my voice, my, my God, where, where are you at in God? I'm not talking about in church. I'm talking about in God. Do you got faith, my God, that will get God's attention? Are you in the midst of some stuff, my God, but the stuff speak louder than your faith right now? What are we really worshiping? Are we worshiping the true and living God? Are we worshiping, my God, when it's Wednesdays? Sometime on Mondays and on Sundays for an hour and a half. But other than that, though, we dominated by the furs and the curves of the world. So where are we at really? That's what Bible study is. It's self-evaluation. We get some sound biblical truth. My God, it might not be seminary laid out, but it's truth. And truth is truth. No matter how you cut it, no matter how you slice it, it's truth. 
So ask yourself, where am I at? The title is Consistent Faith. Daniel, through King Nebuchadnezzar, my God, through Belshazzar, and through King Darius, my God, he maintained his testimony. Through each king, through each trial, he never wavered. He stayed steady. He was anchored. He was sold out. He had a made up mind. He was dependent on God. He couldn't have stood in his own strength. That's why Zechariah 4, 6 says, not by my might nor by my power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. See, what I say, we're trying to stand in faith, but we're standing in flesh and not faith. You can't resist the temptation of the flesh. Neither can I. You have to do it through grace. The empowerment of God. There are certain things you're trying to overcome, you can't overcome until you bring it and submit it to God. There's things you're trying to master, it's going to master you until you bring it and submit it to God. Yeah. Ooh, Lord, that's heavy right there. That's heavy. And it's designed like that. Five treatment centers couldn't get me clean and sober. But when I came and submitted my crack cocaine addiction to Christ, been clean and sober 24 flat years. Because I came and submitted it to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens in hangups you got? That you've been wrestling with, that you come on, even to my recharge women come off in the counter. There's some stuff that God has revealed to you, my God, that you got to submit to God. That's the only way you're gonna overcome it, is that you truly give it to God. That's unforgiveness, give it to God. Sexual ungodliness, give it to God. You got to give it to God and lock it up. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So Daniel spoke to his enemies. They said the only way we're going to get to him is, my God, we got to attack him in, in, his, in his walk. That's what the enemy is after. I told y'all last Monday, I mean Wednesday. My God, whoever, like I said, whoever get the mind, get the life. Whoever get your faith, the enemy is after your faith. Because the Bible says without faith, Pastor Ron, it's impossible to please God. So anything that we, not, we don't do in faith, the Bible says it's sin. And so, my God, don't you know, when, you, when our faith, my God, has been interrupted, when our faith is getting weak, that's when the spirit of discouragement come along. See, if the enemy can get us to question things, if the enemy can get us defeated in our thinking, then our faith get weak. And then we're not going to believe God for what we've been asking God for. And so they said we got to attack him in his, in his walk with God. But they already knew this man wasn't going wasn't to resist, I mean wasn't going to submit to what they was asking. They already knew he, 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 he was a soldier. Daniel was an alpha male. They knew Daniel wasn't finna bow down and worship no other God. They already knew that. Uh, uh, okay, okay, revelation. There's some people, you know, uh, Pastor Ron, there's certain people, they know what to come to you in deep battle. And they know not what to come to y'all about. Uh, don't think it's not strange when people back up because, see, the anointing makes people uncomfortable. See, people will come to people that they know they can get to compromise. They, uh, they're, they're clean to people, my God, that they know that will agree with their dysfunction. They'll search out the person, my God, my God, that they can identify with. Oh, she looked discouraged. She looked defeated. Let me go be her friend. See, because keep in mind, these enemies, administrators, they, administ administrators, they came together. Like I told y'all, my God, you never see a devil fighting against a devil. You don't never see the darkness, the spiritual realm, I mean the, 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 the wickedness, my God, fighting against each other. They unified. They unified. That's why the enemy tries to get into the airways and get into the atmosphere and come out to unity and loyalty and commitment. My God, because he's trying to dismantle the strength in unity. That's why you got to be careful when somebody's always dumping on you. And then you got to be able to, my God, if you know, if somebody come up to you, listen to me, church. Well, I'm talking about Daniel, my God. They knew they couldn't get to Daniel because he was a man of excellence. He had great exceptional abilities, the Bible says. He was a man of knowledge. He was a man of wisdom. He was a man of integrity. He was a man of character. And so what am I saying? If somebody coming to you and they're going to say, hey, I'm going to share something with you. Don't say nothing to nobody. And you know you can't say it. They say, you don't need to share that with me because I can't promise you that. Yeah. That's integrity. I don't need you coming and telling me nothing because I can't promise you that I ain't going to say nothing. And so therefore right now, I heard pastor, I ain't trying to get contaminated, so don't tell me. I know you didn't. Yes, I did. And if you don't like it, you don't have to sit by me no more. I can't get nobody to say nothing right now. What are you willing to do to protect your anointing? What are you willing to do to protect your name when it comes to God? Come on. What are you willing to do to protect your reputation? King Solomon said your reputation means more than gold and silver. King Solomon, the wisest man in the world, compared our reputation, church, to money. Money, gold. Gold in the Old Testament was everything. He said your reputation. 
means more than money because you can spit up some money, but you cannot live your reputation. You can spit up some money, but you cannot live your reputation. Your reputation will follow you everywhere you go. No matter how much God has transformed you. I know Pastor Juju say now, but he was a drug addict. He was a game banger. Key word, W-A-S, was. But that don't mean that. That was part of who I used to be. And so therefore, quit getting mad because people are always trying to bring up what you used to be. This don't let what they bring up now be accurate. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Because that was part of my reputation. I used to be a gangster. I used to be a drug addict. My God, that was what I used to be. They ain't saying he preaching and still using that though. See, 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 what am I trying to teach you? Quit getting upset at people because of what they're talking about now. Just make sure that what they're talking about and accusing you of ain't accurate. I'm talking about reputation. These people knew that Daniel was a man of integrity. Trust me, people in the church and outside the church know who they can come and the python know who he can bite in the church. The python know who to come into a body like this and know all they got to do is say one thing to one person and it's going to contaminate the rest of the body. Woe unto you. Jesus said that. If you're letting the enemy use you, use your mouth to spread lies. Woe unto you. You better be careful. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Be careful. Be careful. Take it off the church. Let me put it in your family. Are you always talking about your family and loved ones? Are you always got something negative to say? About your brothers and your sister. She did me like this. You've been in unforgiveness towards her ever since I was 12 years old. And every time you bring up her name, I let her name come up. You got something negative to say. You just constantly, constantly, constantly. Talking about faith, constantly, constantly, my God. Uh, 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 contaminating and dismantling anything God is trying to do. Watch what you say to people about your kids. Some of you is angry at your own flesh and blood daughters. And every time their name come up, you got something negative to say about her. How can you curse your own seed? Yeah, serious man. Daniel did not alter his ways, even to appease the king. When you go against the king, that's automatic death sentence. Daniel was willing. That's why I'm talking about consistent faith, Pastor. My God, he was willing to go against the king. He was even willing to risk his life, Sharon, before he denied his God. Are you with me, Tiffany? I, I don't love you, and nor do I love my life. What Daniel was saying, boy, I love God. I'm willing to lose my life to keep my allegiance to God. I'm willing to let you walk, and I don't care if you ever talk to me again before you get me to deny my God. If you don't like my stance, brother or sister, my God, because I'm striving to live this thing, then it might be best that you picture you rolling. See, I'm trying to make you understand because this man was willing to offer, lose his life before he denied or blaspheme his God. We got to get that level of conviction. Our conviction as a body, as a person, as a body, and also individuals got to go up. What's your conviction level? You know, I teach you, if it's a five or less, you're in trouble. Five, conviction. Conviction will keep you and I from doing a lot of stuff that we know we shouldn't be doing. When somebody want to say something, we want to say, uh, the Spirit of God said, don't you say that. Do you know how dangerous it is, my God, to, to spread a lie off a of false perception? You don't even know what you're saying is truth. This, don't you know your eyes can deceive you? Yeah. You can assume something is, is, is happening or something happened and it went this way, that way, and it don't even be that way. That's why the Bible says, and all you're getting, get an understanding. And so be careful. I'm fathering you. Be careful. In the church and outside the church, even on your job in the office. When your partner you've been with, your, your office mate you've been working with for five years, and she or he come tell you something, and before you know it, you just slipped up and spread it there, and now it's a rumor going around in the office, and it came out of your mouth. Yeah, only two people knew about it, you and him, or you and her. So then when you called into the office, and all of a sudden they give you exit paper, papers, then you ain't got nobody to blame but yourself. Because you said something that was inaccurate. And now we mad. Now we unemployed. And now we ain't. I'm, 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 see, it's just that simple. It's just that simple. See, this type of level of teaching I heard, my God, you very seldom hear it. But this is what you call internal transformation. Right. This is what you call, my God, cleaning up all of us. Yeah. 
making us aware of the areas that we got to improve and grow in. My, go my goal is to help you and I, I and you become healthy believers in Christ. And it has to flow like this at times. We got to look at ourselves, my God, to quit deceiving ourselves and thinking because we came to church and we gave five dollars and we didn't cuss nobody out that we ain't got no more work to do. The devil is alive. <laughs> Let me get you out of here now. Uh, uh, yeah. He remained consistent despite the danger, in spite the pressure to conform. Uh oh, that gets us all the time. You already told yourself you weren't going to the club this weekend. You already told yourself you ain't going to spend no money. And now you're in an internal war. And all of a sudden, she called. That person that you always go out with. Our homies, he called. And said, and you just conformed. Daniel never gave in to pressure. Can you resist? The spirit to conform. New Testament, Paul said, be ye transformed. Don't be conformed, two-part word, conform. Don't join with the world. Conform, two-part, con-form. Don't join with, don't conform to the world. But be transformed, butterfly, caterpillar to butterfly. Go from a caterpillar to a by your mind. You got to guard this. You got to be careful what you're listening to, who you're talking to, who you're sitting with. Oh my God, who you're spending more time with. I told y'all last uh, Wednesday, my God, look at your five friends that'll tell you your future. Y'all heard that? Look at the five friends. Do you even know those five people you spend the most time talking to? What's their plan? What's their purpose? Take it off of five, three. Look at three women, three men that you talk to the most, that you hang out with the most. What do you know about your mother and their name? And that they smoke weed, they go to the club, and they cheat, and all the stuff that we know we're about each other. That, ain't, you, that don't mean you know nobody. Ask that, them three people, my God, tell, ask them to tell you what their plan is in life. What's their purpose in life. In this hour, Carmen, were you going where God has called you to? Where God brought you out of first, and then where God put in you, and what you have discovered, self-discovery, leadership, leadership, and self-discovery. What you have discovered about yourself, you ain't got time to be joining with the wrong people. I don't care how long you know them. You're on a mission. And that's why I'm glad you connected to people like Janice that's going somewhere. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Come on, somebody. So do you really know the people? Do you know them? Do you know the people you spend time with? So Atani, little star, the people y'all talk to the most, you got to say, God, show me their heart. Show me them. Ask them, who are you? What you mean, Atani, who am I? My name is such and such. No, that's not who you are. What is your plan? What is your desires? What is your life? What is your goals? What do you see yourself at? I'm going to college. What's your grades like? I got all D's. You ain't ready for college. You're just telling me what you want me to hear. See, I'm trying to teach y'all because, see, we connected to the wrong people. And we wonder why we can't soar. And we wonder why we can't move up. My God. Oh, my God. We wonder why we always feel it, my God. Down, my God. Because they always dump it. They always, my God. You connected to contaminated spirits, my God. Even in the church. And you're always feeling way down. I ain't come in tell you talk to you. You're like, my God. I hate talking. Every time you see the phone, God, what's she calling me for? But every time you pick it up, every time. Because you want to know the 9, the 411. Somebody give God a hand. Let me get y'all out of here. <laughs> I love it. That's why you don't give me no microphone. <laughs> Let me give you this. Let me give you this. First, amen, amen. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 15. Let me go quickly. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Uh, Paul talking to the church. He says, in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, he says, Be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically. For the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be strong, church, in this hour. Be steadfast and unmovable. I seen a lot of them. I was telling my baby last night. We seen a lot of them when I came home, Star. They had already been in church and some of them growed up in church. But they ain't not last a storm. They thought mine was just jailhouse religion. They didn't think your pastor, son, was serious about God. Because so many people come home from prison talking about Christ, and then they sprint out 
sprint out. And they all in the world. They so focused on partying, all white parties and, and, uh, and, and black and white parties. And, you know what I'm trying to say? They, they go to church, but they ain't operate. They still the same, in the same spiritual condition and the same spiritual level they was when I came home in 1998. But I was the one that wasn't supposed to make it. I wasn't the one that's supposed to make it. They've been to church. A lot of them is PK kids. And they ain't doing nothing, but they love the world. They go to church to clear their conscience. I'm keeping it on a dollar, and if you look at it, I'm talking to you. Because you, it's more than that in you. It's more than that in you. Don't settle for just going to church and not knowing who you are. Don't conform to the world. Daniel was, 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 was even willing to resist the king. He was willing to die. Write this down up on the two, and I'm done. It testifies also to his enemies, one, and then two, it testifies to his focus. Where your level of focus at? I told you last Wednesday. Where you set your focus, that's what you seek after. Yeah. Wherever you set your focus, set your mind, that's what you seek after. Where you set tonight? Where your compass at? Where you got your GPS set tonight? Is it heavenward or is it horizontal? Where you set your focus, that's what you seek after. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom. 633. Paul said, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Paul also said, set your mind on things above. Look up. See, so trying to say, no matter what you're feeling tonight, and I'm bringing it in, no matter what you brought up in here tonight, you got to begin to allow the spirit of the living God to shift and set. Shift, set your focus, and then seek. I'm going this way. Shift me. Focus me. And then let me seek after that what I'm supposed to be seeking after. Where you seek, what you seek after determines the internal peace or the internal chaos that you will experience in life. See, we seeking after and focus on the wrong thing that's calling us internal chaos. It's causing us more frustration. Don't seek the contaminated. Seek the uncontaminated. There is no happiness in the world. The stuff, my God, that the enemy is trying to pull you and I back to, ain't nothing in that. I told y'all the world ain't got nothing to offer me. Just like Paul said, I, I, I'm dead to all this stuff. The world ain't got nothing to offer me. We've been there, done there, and seen that. We make that statement. Shemaine, we say we've been there, done, and seen that. The first thing we do is run back to the very stuff we're talking about. We've been there, done, and seen that. See, we make a mockery out of our life, and we wonder why people don't respect us as men and women of God, and the church has no power. Power, not volume, influence. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful. It's going to take consistent faith in this hour. Daniel stayed the course. Knowing that he had no one to please but God. See, that's why you got to get to the point where you deliver from the opinions of your brothers and sisters. Your natural brothers and sisters and your spiritual brothers and sisters. You got to get to the point. There's times in your walk where you have to be selfish. There come seasons in your life where you got to serve yourself to other people. And there's other times you got to pull back from people. When you know you got to work through something, you're trying to hear from God. You got to put yourself on a consecration from people. You see what I'm trying to say? But see, if your self-esteem, if you're a person that always needs somebody, if you're the type of person right now that grown with kids and even grandkids, always got to have somebody rubbing you and affirming you and calling you and checking on you. See, you, you are cold, as Janice has taught me, you're codependent. Yeah. Why is it that you're codependent on humans, but you're not codependent on God? See, I'm codependent on God. You take God, I relapse. You take God, I kill myself. You take God, I cheat on my wife. You take God, I smoke dope. Yeah. I'm de I am codependent on Jesus the Christ. Amen. And if you take him away, I die. You take him away, I die. How about you? I'm not deceived. I can't make without God. How about you? I can't stay sober without God. How about you? I won't read without God. How about you? I won't pray without God. How about you? I can't love you without God. How about you? We codependent on everything. Some of us codependent on our wives more than we dependent on God. We do what she say do more than we do what God say do. 
We don't want to offend her. You know why? Because we got her car and it's in her name. So we got to submit to what she tells us to do. So guess what? Who's your God really? Consistent faith. Yes, you have to be selfish. When you're trying to get healthy, get selfish. Get selfish. Watch this. Get selfish in a healthy way. Not selfish means you come in with a nasty attitude. You don't want to deal with nobody. That's not love. Selfish means I got to back up because a lot of my problem is probably you more than it is me. Be careful what you're attached to. Remember I told you people need you to be dysfunctional. People need you to be able to dump on because it makes them feel good. Remember the administrators appeal to the pride of the king. Oh, what? Everybody in the kingdom got to bow down and worship me? Oh, yeah, let me hurry up and sign that decree. Pride. With impure motives. The very people that was in place to govern him set him up. Set him up. He ended up killing him anyway. Be careful. The ditch you did for somebody else it may be for you. The hole you trying to put somebody else in, you may be the one to end up in it. As I finish, when we walk faithfully with the Lord, despite the problems and temptation that surround us, he, I mean, Daniel made a bold statement about where the focus of his life really was. Bold statement. The Bible says when Peter then preached the gospel, New Testament, book of Acts, the Bible said the spirit of the Lord came upon, upon them with, and they preached, pastor, with boldness. See, the spirit will empower you. To do stuff in the natural that you cannot do in your own strength. There's a boldness that even come upon your pastor. My God, when I'm preaching from the spirit. See what I'm trying to say? And then when they release, I tend to come down. <laughs> Why did I say that? Because some of you are called to disrupt natural kingdoms. To shift environments. To overthrow, my God. <sighs> but when you get around certain people, my God, you, my God, you shrink. You put your your boldness on the shelf because you don't want anybody to criticize you for your boldness. You've been told, my God, you too bold, you arrogant. No, 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 no. The Spirit of the Lord. See, you got to understand this. Kristen taught us last night, my God. Monday night, my God. There, there are certain assignments that you are created for. Right. And God has gifted you with the grace and the spirit and the wisdom and knowledge and understanding to fulfill that assignment. And so when you walk into an environment, you don't get the chance to shrink. Yeah, that's right. Daniel was forced to go through three kings and he never shrunk. Yeah, yeah. He never denied God because he was gifted on his assignment to stand for God. Because these were unbelieving kings who did not worship his God and did not know his God. If Daniel would have submitted my God to them because of their office as the king, he would have missed an opportunity to expose God to three kings. But instead, he was bold in his faith. He was radical. He was an alpha male. He was a real one. He was sold out. His mind was made up. His heart was fixed. His focus was set. And so therefore, when it came time, my God, when the enemy came up against his faith, when temptation came up against him, he already had his mind made up. Yeah. Paul said to live as Christ and to die as gain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some things you got to make your mind up with now. Because when the temptation or the trial come, you ain't going to have time to make a decision. The decision got to already be made, baby. Yeah. You got to make the decision now. You got to settle in your mind now that I will not bow. Every tongue going to confess and every knee going to bow. You got to begin to tell yourself this stuff right now. God, prepare me not to ever denounce you. Prepare me, my God. If they blow my head off, I'm going on to be with the Lord. My God, if people walk away, my God, and, ah, and leave me, I'm going on with God. My God, if people criticize me and crucify me because I still believe in holiness and righteousness and sanctification and we never get past 300, praise be to God. But I'm obey God. You got to be willing to be crucified for your faith. Daniel was willing to be crucified and Paul behind his faith. Are you denying God on your job? 
Are we denying God, watch this, not verbally, but by our lifestyle? Around our unbelieving friends and loved ones and co-workers? There's many ways to deny your faith. Daniel had consistent faith. He came through three kings. The furnace, he passed the test in the furnace. He passed the test in the lion's den. Come on, somebody. He stood, even when his own friends that was in the kingdom with him turned against him. Are you ready for people to turn against you? Don't you know the more you and I, I and you get in God's presence, the more you and I begin to look like and carry the aroma and the sweet fragrance of God and his people, my God, my God. The fragrance, Minister Tiffany, will separate. The fragrance of God, the real fragrance of God, the oil from heaven will separate the goats from the sheep in your life. The real fragrance. Because the real fragrance will attract <laughs> Real sheep will find pure, unadulterated fragrance. Right. Not contaminated, not full of scripture, not full of tongues. Right. The aroma. They will find it. They will find it, Sheila. It's okay to be different. It's okay. God gets you set apart for a time as this. First lady was speaking highly about you, woman of God. I see you. I'm watching you, and you have passed the test. Well, honestly, I'm proud of you, Sheila. And not only am I proud of you, Pastor Madeline is proud of you. That's what I see in you. Continue to be led with that prophetic gift. Never let emotions interfere with the prophetic, because you have it. Only release it when you know there is God. Because you can release it ahead of God and it not be received when it's something that was supposed to be received, but you're out of time. That's all I see when it comes to you. Consistent faith. It takes faith to build Connection Church, Pastor Ron and Pastor D. We have went through several people trying to get to the little bit that we got. Just because they come don't mean they're going to stay with you. You only want that what is assigned each season, the seasons in ministry. People come, as T.D. Jakes talked to us, the three types of people. Some come just for the assignment. When the assignment is fulfilled, they leave. Bless them. Thank God that they was faithful to the assignment. Then some people come because they believe in you. They believe in the cause. They believe in Connection Church. They believe in the pastors. And they will stay. And they will work. And they will serve. And they will protect. They will keep the enemy away. There will be a wall of protection around you. Them are the Peter, the James, John's it's painful many of them I thought would still be here of course we talk about this real father and real sonship preparing you for where you're going keep your heart pure don't let people in too soon your life don't belong to everybody Everybody don't need to feel your square. And then that season when well, you got to let them go. Why? Because when God is taking you, they are holding your faith down. If they have become more of a weight, it's time to become selfish and shift. Offer that now and ask yourself this. Do I got faith that would outlast the storms that's coming? Do I got enough anchored faith to endure the trials that I'm facing right now and the ones that's on this way? Because the Bible says all those that desire to live godly get ready for persecution. Have you made your mind up, my God, that you will not renounce Christ? 
for the popularity of people. Do we go into I mean, environments, my God, and we put Christ on the shelf because we want to fit in in an environment? Or do we stay in? How is our lives for Christ? How is our faith? Because without it, we can't please God, we can't resist the flesh, and we can't soar without biblical faith. Now, faith is. Now, faith is. The evidence, do you and I, I and you, have the evidence? If not, God wants to make sure you have that. Because I'm telling you, after all of the hype, after all of the emotions, after all of the preaching, after all of the teaching, after all of the tongues, the one thing that's going to be absolutely necessary to outlast life is faith. It's faith. You got to have real, sound, biblical faith. It takes faith to stay clean and sober. It takes faith to love your wife. It takes faith to get up every day and go to your job. It takes faith, my God, to do anything in life. Real faith. Let's stand. If you need me to touch and agree with you concerning your faith, let me see your hand. Come down quick. Let's touch and agree. We're talking about anchored faith. Just come stand. Everybody come stand. Just line up. Remember what the Spirit of God said. Don't let the spirit of self-deception fool you. You think you're somewhere when you really ain't. Because it showed you. You got the evidence. Do you got the evidence outside the four walls that you got real biblical faith, not church faith? Father, we bless you now to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us spotless before the one true and living God be glory, honor, and power both now and forever. God, we bless your church. We bless you in the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. You are released.